Uh, well, I mean, script written by the Coen brothers, Angelina Jolie obviously directing, you must have been pretty thrilled when you got this call. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it kind of had a lot of things already in place. There was already a lot of people, a lot of very reputable people working hard to make me look good already. So we hit the ground running, so to speak. Yeah, because I mean, it must be just so encouraging to know that the likes of 71 starred up, but the liability, they didn't go unnoticed, you know, that they're being picked up by American casting directors and obviously you're reaping the awards. The awards. Yeah, I, I think that's a credit to uh, that area of the business as a whole. Um, you know, having been there, the, there's a lot of exciting filmmakers working hard and it is an epicentre of the industry. So for them to pay this attention uh, in our industry and, and even further, you know, globally, they're very globally savvy too. It, it does uh, confirm to me anyway that they do appreciate cinema as a whole and not just their own work. So it's offered me this chance anyway. And in regards to this story, I mean, it's just incredible. If you'd written it yourself, I mean, you'd, you'd get accused of being unrealistic. Exactly. But when you were reading that script, I mean, did you know anything about it prior, prior to reading the script? No, no, very little. Only what I'd been spoon fed through school in terms of that, that war and, and uh, you know, uh, I guess a Commonwealth perspective on that. So yeah, I was quite ignorant actually. I'm pretty ashamed to admit. Um, but I feel, you know, uh, this this is a crucial tale, and hopefully, you know, the, there's more, more similar to, to Louis as well. He'd always uh, argue that that was the case, you know. He never glorified himself as anything extra special. Um, so we've got a responsibility to now make sure that, that that doesn't get lost in history, you know, because our generation, the luxuries that we have on offer, are a result of their sacrifice. So yeah. it's important. And did you get the chance to meet uh, Louis? Because obviously, you know, he was he was around for the sort of pre preliminary stages of the of the shoot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, three times oh, cool. overall, I got to spend the time with the fella uh, twice prior to the shoot, and then there was the third uh, final meeting. No pressure, no schedule, no diet. Just got to hang with the man. Yeah, yeah. must have been quite incredible to actually just spend time with him, and ask him all these questions you probably had going through yeah. your head, I imagine. No, I was awestruck. Yeah. I was awestruck. But I don't like to badger people, you know? I'm just more than happy being in their company sometimes. I don't want to, you know what I mean, pester the man. Yeah. He's 97, I was. <laughs> of course, I, mean, I was just wondering as well, do you feel even more kind of pressure in regards to taking this role as a Brit, given how this story is kind of ingrained, I think, more so in American culture, and it's kind of a big story over there that I think, obviously, coming in from the UK, was there, did you get a, more of a sense of that kind of pressure? Yeah, certainly when the customs people are describing me as an alien, <laughs> an alien with extraordinary talent. Uh. Earthlings. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, no, that, the, the whole thing adds up, yeah. Yeah, but I felt ready, you know, and, and you know, I take satisfaction in that being the case. Yeah. I mean, of course, I'm, one of, I'm sure you've been asked countless times about it, but I mean, the weight loss obviously was quite a, quite a, quite a thing. And I remember um, Tom Hanks speaking when he had to lose weight for Philadelphia and said that it had, there were quite a few implications for a while. And I was wondering, were you ever quite sort of aware of the, the dangers? Or were you ever quite cautious about you know, what, it could be, what you could be doing to your body, I suppose? No, for sure. I was, I, I was frightened. I was, I was frightened. Um, and then that, that becomes just one of many stresses that, that were on offer to me throughout that shoot. So, um, and I had to get, I, I had to recover and become Olympian Louis. And uh, so the, the weaker I got, the, the further I felt from being able to achieve the Olympian too. So it was do, do absolute justice to emaciation Louis or do absolute justice to Olymp Olympian Louis. And I was frightened of CGI having to be the case either way there. Um, so yeah, it, it, it was tricky, but I had a team of professionals, experts, that, that helped map out the whole thing and, and the schedule was kind of tailored to suit my weight loss and weight gain, almost. Yeah, that's because I mean, you've got a tulip fever up next. I was just wondering what uh, that one's all about and how your character fits into that story. Yeah, I play a fishmonging, uh, very popular, young Dutch fella of the 17th century. His name's Willem, uh, and he's got a girlfriend called Maria, who he's besotted by, and uh, that's played by Holiday Granger. And I, I, I think we did it. I think, but that, that's, that's m my involvement in, 
in tulip fever. It's actually centred around two other love interests. I'm just there to decorate it with Willem. Because <laughs> rumours about Money Monster too, is there any truth in, in that? We're talking. Yeah. Yeah, there's conversations being had. But without the ink being dry, you know, I don't want to jinx anything, you know. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for your time. No today. worries, Much mate. appreciated. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!